And I know that, you know, and again, we're bouncing around with the story, and that's, that's on me, but there was, af after Fly God, I mean, I don't know if you can add more context to what happened right before Fly God and how Fly God hit and how important that was. Can you add to that? Um, I think that Hitler too. Okay. And um, Hitler too, and the uh, uh, the tape that he did with uh, Ghost. And I think Conway just did a collab with Ghost recently too. He just dropped the album with Ghost, and I forget the name of it. I'm behind on listening to my album. Right, but so so this was West Side Guns' uh, collaboration with Ghost back okay. then. Okay. So once that uh, got into the uh, the atmosphere and people were like feeling it, then those connections that he had made, the the people that he knew, that's when they was like, all right, we. This guy is working. Okay. So that was during the, you know, the era when Fly Guy was being recorded and being, you know, put together. And then he just basically connected with the, uh, some of the people that was already managed by Goliath imprint. And that's uh, Rosenberg's imprint. So um, they were already being managed by him. And so, of course, he's going to be looking like, well, who is this guy that's with my artist? Like, you already, you with people that I already got control over or, you know, I, I'm already managing their, their movements and, and their project. So, who is this guy? Like, you Action know? Bronson, right, is involved? Yeah, Action Bronson and uh, uh, um, Mayhem Loren, all those guys that, that are in that, at, that stratosphere, um, you know, by him having a connection with those guys, it was like inevitable for him to, you know, like, okay, let's, let's work with this guy. Like he's on the radar. Like this guy is really, you know, a force to be reckoned with and it's underground, but it's different, you know? And I know he worked with, um, MF doom. A lot of my, 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 um, subscribers, my family, my man, Matt Stacks is always telling me so-and-so came out of the school of doom, which I haven't heard much MF doom. I know people in my comments are going to be mad at me. I just, haven't maybe I got to get up on it, but people always say the school of doom, and I know there's a there's a cover. I don't know what the name of the album is where West got that mask, that MF Doom type uh, mask on, and was he was connected and they did a project together or? Yeah, they. I think that I think it was like a couple songs. I don't know if it was it was a full album, um, but it was called West Side Doom, um. And it was a collaboration between West Side Gun and MF Doom. Um, and it was some good music. I, I, you know, I, the stuff that I heard that's unreleased is dope, as well as the stuff that I heard that's released. You know, super dope. Um, what wasn't the best situation for West Side either, I'm hearing, making that project? Is that correct? Or am I overstepping my bounds? Say it again. It wasn't that collaboration, the, the, the logistics of it working, West Side and MF Doom working together was not the best. Um, situation at the end of the day? Yeah, yeah. I would say that it just, you know, that, that falls back into timing too, you know? Okay. And I think that it's also a nod to Westside not wanting to force things and wanting things to be uh, organic and on time as opposed to like, oh, this sounds good. Maybe this will turn into something else. Like, let's just use this whole MF Doom thing and try to bounce that and, you know, he ain't going to force it if it ain't, even if he do feel that way about it, he ain't going to force it to happen. It, it needs to go smooth or it's not going to go at all. And I know he was taking, West Side I'm talking about here, was taking, he was really on his grind, taking trips from um, ATL to New York on, on a Greyhound, right? There was a time when he had a meeting with Def Jam? Yeah, well, well, he, he had a friend that worked in Def Jam. Okay. So, um... You know, he knew that if he just keep going up there and they keep seeing his face and becoming more familiar with who he is, you know, he's a he's a stand up guy. He's he going to approach you with respect. And, you know, no matter who his friend would introduce him to, it's going to West Side Gun will leave a lasting impression on you as a real stand up guy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, him just banking on that alone, you know, he would, you know, catch a shuttle bus from Atlanta to New York, you know, to 
maybe three times a month, you know, mm-hmm. just to rub shoulders with the people that he had been introduced introduced to on the prior trip, but as well as add more, you know, um, shoulders, so to speak. And then, as you know, at at some point, everything started to bubble. Shady, Rock Nation. These are big moves, uh, high power cosigns. But I wanted you to talk to me about West Side's philosophy when it comes to labels. It's a calculated step, and it's it's for the betterment of both parties, if possible. But ultimately, the West Side Gun side of the 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 chessboard is gonna, you know really be doing the power move at the same time so right. when you when you talking about uh him connecting with shady it, it was more to bring light from the underground hip-hop movement or the underground hip-hop scene to his imprint now you guys know what griselda is because of shady Mm. Not saying that it wouldn't have gotten there eventually. It's just it's easier to stand on a, a larger stage so more people can hear you. And the situation with Rock Nation, what's that about? That's a management deal, or um, I think that the the situation, as far as from what I know, as far the West Side Guns connection to uh, Rock Nation is. Up until that point, West Side Gun didn't have a manager. He was doing it all by himself. Wow! Like he had he had help from like you know road manager and you know some other entities here and there, but he was his own. He was managing his whole career himself. So though he he signed to or though his imprint has a distribution through Shady him as a as an artist needed management and since uh rock nation was available to do that that's how that situation came together okay got you he, and- he was already talking with with jay and talking with um you know that whole rock nation some people in the rock nation staff before shady Okay. He knew the rock nation people before he even signed to shady in the, in the beginning Got you. I, I want to. I'm trying to. I want to prod you along just a little bit because I know we had a, a a small pre-interview, and there was a philosophy that you talked about with West Side Gun and the way he thinks about these labels. And I believe the way you put it was he don't really give a fuck about none of these labels. I would say that he cares about them to the extent of business and the role that that business plays in the overall calculation so if the plan is to get from point a to point b they are just a conduit in the road they aren't the the labels and the and all of that the hoopla and all of the uh uh praise and all of the uh you know how we kind of like put these labels on a pedestal as like juggernauts and just you know like guys almost i would say no he doesn't put them on a pedestal like that he puts himself on a pedestal so he don't look up to yeah. anybody you know what i'm saying and his own movements his own uh choices in the business that he holds for himself he's putting himself up like that and looking at himself as a shining example and where he wants to take it but not necessarily looking at those guys like, ooh, I got to do whatever to make them happy. Not that type of party with what's like that. So, I mean, you guys came up together. You came up it, with, with fashion. So people are wondering as to what the whole methodology is behind West Side Gun. Dude really was studying the art, and there's a real artistic approach to it. And before we even go on to that, I, I just saw a video yesterday. Uh, and by the time people see this video, it'd probably be two days ago that I saw that video. Um, my heart goes out to uh, uh, West Side Gun. I know he, and, and I don't know if you saw this video or not, but he, he had a video, he posted a video, he, he lost his, his vinyl collection. 
my whole collection, my whole art collection, man. Everything just been rained on, man. All the vinyls been rained on, man. All of them bent. I wanted to collect these and keep these forever, man. All of them wet. Tanner Talk 3 Obi strips, everything. <sighs> man. That collection that he was saving for his kids. And he, he showed the video so many pieces, so many vinyl pieces with fantastic artwork on it. And it, it just rained inside his crib days before he was actually set to move out of there. And I, I read the post on IG, saw the video. I felt the man's pain. Um, I know what it's like to lose all, all your, your music, but this is losing all your shit on a fucking different level. Because as he said, he was going to pass this down uh, to his children. And, and, and that's years of uh, a blood, sweat, and tears. So, um, you know, respect. And I, I hope he's doing okay uh, behind that mishap. Um, and I think it's going to be, everything's going to be better on the other side. God, God got a plan for him, but talk about that, the vision, the, the artistic, cause you guys come by it. Honestly, you guys went to a performing art school. I said this before that this wasn't like fame, right? You just run around there tap dancing. You y'all brought your aesthetic to this gifted arts program. And y'all didn't let them switch y'all up. Y'all made them again, come to y'all. And then y'all brought grimy out of that situation on the other side and took their knowledge, coupled it with, with your aesthetic, your aura on the other side, you bring that knowledge and aura together and boom, y'all really like street fashion soldiers, you know, artwork, the exclusive pieces, all kind of stuff. Um, so first, before we even get back on the West side gun, let me talk about, to you about your philosophy on, uh, making these pieces and art and fashion and design. Let's, let's get deeper into that. Um, for me, you know, I'm I'm an artist first. Mm -hmm. You know, fashion is just a a way for me to get a consumer to wrap their their mind around spending money on art. Mm. So, if I'm outside selling canvases with something that I paint cool that I painted it on, on it, it's harder for me to sell that than it is to for me to sell that same artwork on a a t-shirt or a, a hoodie or something like that because people can wrap their mind around the artwork when it's placed on something that they can wear so that's how i you know got into the whole fashion fashion uh, side of it um i kind of just look at it as self-expression you know um a lot of us grow up in urban environments where there's a lot of african americans around it and um because of so many, we have to express ourselves via, you know, what we're wearing. So that's that's really the way that we can stand out in a crowd of the basically what would, would assume to be the same face. You know, we're, we're all, you know, telling our story based off of what we're dressed in. So that's just the way for me to tell tell you how i feel that day or the the way to tell to tell you what i'm attached to or what you know t-shirts nowadays is just you know people say what they what they feel on them a lot of times you know so um but really i just i never wanted to look like nobody I never wanted to have on the clothes that nobody, I always wanted to have something that nobody could plausibly have gone into a store and picked it up off of a rack. However, I've always wanted it to look quality as if I did pick it up off of a rack. Mm. So I don't, I'm not applauding just homemade clothing. I wanted it to be up to the standards of the clothes that I was buying off of the rack but just truly unique on all all ways that you can you know look at it and what's the what's the creative day look like for you you wake up i'm gonna guess 10 o'clock in the morning because you your own boss so uh oh yeah yeah i mean it, you know um like i said i've been doing this clothing thing custom clothing things from way back then you know the bmf era so you know i still have customers that attached to me back then just because i was with those guys mm. you know so they rely on me to uh facilitate their uh image so to mm. speak 
Like everybody knows them for for being fly, so they gotta come to me to keep that uh, machine moving, so to speak. Westside Gun included. Okay, and then so and then you and West connect. You'll do a piece for West. He'll rock it. It becomes iconic. But y'all are not together in a company. You got your company. He got his thing. And then when y'all want to collab, y'all come together, boom, pop something out, and then move to y'all separate corners again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, um, we're both Leos. We're both headstrong. We're both leaders. We both, you know, we can do collaboration ideas. And we do collaboration ideas all the time. But it's we both need our own business. We don't need to be you know, uh, connected in the way of uh, a business because I want to run mine how I want to run mine and he want to run his how he want to run his and he has his own calculated steps and chess moves that he want to play with his and I have my own calculated steps and chess moves that I want to use mine for. Just to, to say this, me and him are friends first. Right. So that's going to trump anything that has anything to do with any business, music, or any of that type of stuff. We are are very, very close friends. We want the best for one another, and we willing to help one another in any way. So, you know, whether it be something that, you know, uh, Fashion Rebels, he has an idea, and he doesn't really know how to accomplish it because I went to, to college for fashion design, I can tell him the best and most efficient way to accomplish the look or the design or, you know, whatever that is. So, you know, that's how that, that's how that goes. So I pride myself on not being thirsty. Um, I think I, I put something on IG one day that said, don't be thirsty, be ambitious or be ambitious, not thirsty. And so I take pride in not being thirsty, but how many, Thirsty cats like me, admittedly thirsty on this point of view, coming to your um, DMs, trying to touch, get your pieces. Because I'm thirsty about this shit. I'm honest. Um, You know, I, I have people from time to time, you know, inquire about things that they might see on my page or, you know, and, that, and that's not necessarily just items that's connected to West Side Gun. It, it might just be something that you know, I might have made for somebody else that was, you know, famous or something like that. Um, and I try to tell them that this was an art project or this was a project. Mm. You can begin your own project uh, with me if you would like to. You know, we just have to brainstorm and, you know, come together. And it's the same process that I would do with, um you know, future as I would do with West Side Gun, or it was I, as I would do with just Joe Schmo at the bank. You know, it's, and Reagan era is st is popping right now. It's still doing its thing. Did you just drop an, a new uh, a line this week? Some tops, some. Um, I'm dropping a uh, I dropped a sneak peek re uh, yesterday. Um, I'm gonna be dropping my summer stuff uh, next week, but it'll just be you know everything that I always do is limited. So you know, um, it's really um, to keep the the fan base of the brand, you know, solid and, uh, you know, just to have give them something so that they can, you know, go out and represent the brand. But really, my brand is a way for people that are a fan of my work, my one of ones and the custom stuff that can't afford it. Because like me. Those things are like projects more so than they are just a piece of clothing. Um, for the people who can't afford that stuff, but they are a fan of my work, they can buy, uh, you know, some some part of the brand. And, you know, I, I usually make everything in like 25 pieces or less. So, you know, um, it might it, it might be five of each size. So you got five small, five medium, five large, five extra large, and five 2X. And then that's it. You know, once they are sold out, then they are sold out. So. A lot of people right now are going to my page and going to my uh, website via my page and uh, they see everything on the website nice and want to buy it, but they can't because it's sold out. So now this the summer stuff is for the people who can't who did didn't get an opportunity to get some of the fall stuff that came out. And hopefully at some point 
you know, you will expand your brand and come out with a fat boy line because some of us need three X. For um, I had a, I had that conversation with people all the time, like, bro, why you don't make a three X? Why you don't make a three X? Um, it's already already a challenge to make two X's. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of the look that I want to get in the way that the clothing is made, if I was to use, I would have to use a whole different pattern to make it look right on a 3X frame. Oh. So you understand what I'm saying? So let's yeah. say the shirt might just say Paris across the front of it. That size chest on a small, there you go. See what I'm saying? On a small, that imprint looks big but on a 3x it oh looks yeah small you understand what i'm saying so yeah. i would have to i would have to use a whole new template just for the 3x guy so that they so when they walking around they don't the print that's on theirs don't look all tiny compared to the rest of the people yeah and so if you just uh now joining this channel or you just clicked into this video or came out of the kitchen what just happened is i got fat shamed by ronald reagan on my own show he said, nigga, lose weight. I <laughs> nah, nah, man. You just, you, just need to, you just need to slim down just a little bit. I ain't saying that I'm fat shaming you. I'm just saying slim down just a little bit. Yeah, and, man. You know, wear the clothes that fit you, too, bro. You ain't got the, everything. Don't got to be all brolic and, you know, falling all off of you. You know what I'm saying? Your, your, your shoulder seam, where the seam goes down the shoulder of your yeah. shirt should be on your shoulder not right. on your bicep yeah. you understand what i'm yeah, saying yeah 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 this is this is a 3x joint right here now yeah then. so 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 if this is 3x then you know that like i said that where where the where the shoulder meet the sleeve yeah it should be on your shoulder it's just a little bit not on your bicep you see what i'm saying <laughs> So you really, in, in truth, you wear a 2X, you just buying a, you buying a 3X because you want an oversized fit. That's hey, he caught that really going absolutely on. correct. My girl said the same thing, like, dude, your clothes are just a little, because we trying to, like, hide the gut and shit. I'm about to get to the calisthenics, a uh, lot more fucking broccoli and juices and shit. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I have a, a, a world-famous designer telling me how to get it done on my show. So I can't do nothing but take that advice. That, that's a jewel. I thank you for that. Um, and I'm still going to be in your DMs like, let me get a 3X. 